Hello and welcome to the first episode of my brand new series, Mysteries with Lex. I am your host Lex Ellis and today I give you a bone chilling story about the death of Elisa Lamb. Creepy tales of mysterious deaths are not an uncommon thing to hear tossed around. However, not many cases are quite as unique as the case of Elisa Lamb. A young woman who checked in at a hotel and was later found dead in the hotel's water tanks. Let's get started and look at the case. Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old Canadian student at the University of British Columbia. When she left her home in January 2014 for a trip to Southern California, which she called her West Coast tour on her Tumblr blog, she planned to stop in San Diego, Los Angeles, Santa Cruz and San Francisco. She travelled alone on Amtrak and Intercity buses. She visited the San Diego Zoo and posted photos taken there on social media. On January 26th, she arrived in Los Angeles and checked into the Cecil Hotel near downtown Skid Row. Built as a business hotel in the 1920s, the Cecil fell on hard times during the Great Depression of the 1930s and never recaptured its original market as downtown decayed around it in the late 20th century. Several of Los Angeles' more notable murders have happened or have connections to the hotel. Elizabeth Short, victim of the Black Dahlia murder, the city's best-knowing unsolved killing, supposedly made the Cecil her last stop before her death. And in 1964, Georgie Osgood and the Pigeon Lady of Pershing Square was raped and murdered in her room at the Cecil, another crime that has never been solved. Serial killers Jack Unterweger and Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, both resided at the Cecil while active. There have also been suicides, one of which also killed a pedestrian passing in front of the hotel. After recent renovations, it has tried to market itself as a boutique hotel, but the reputation lingers. Eliza's trip seemed to be going very smoothly. She had reached her destination, settled in at a cheap hotel, completely oblivious to the events that would soon unfold. On February the 19th, some guests at the hotel were complaining of low water pressure. Other guests were complaining that their water was discoloured and had a strange smell. The wholesale decided to investigate this and headed up to check on the water tanks. When they opened up the water tank, they found Eliza Lamb's body, floating and bloated. Investigators of the case were puzzled by this. How did Eliza Lamb get herself into the large water tank all by herself? Not to mention, how did she get past the two locked and alarmed doors that led to the rooftop? As well as this, the media have released footage that shows her last time alive inside an elevator. I warn you, this footage is disturbing and viewer discretion is advised.
If the footage I just showed you doesn't give you nightmares, then you're officially a man of steel. But it's very interesting. The whole case itself is interesting. What caused those erratic movements in the elevator? Was she possessed? Was she under the influence of drugs? Was she drunk? Did she have a psychotic break? In fact, research shows in Eliza's life she suffered from bipolar disorder and was quite often depressed. But that doesn't explain one thing. Even if her mental state was terrible, if she was drunk, high, in the middle of a mental break and acted that way, there is one question that always chills me and hasn't got any answers to explain it. Why did the elevator doors not close? What caused the doors not to function? If those doors were damaged, why did they close after she left? What made the doors work again? She stood in that elevator for a good 30 seconds and the doors did not budge. If someone was standing next to the elevator holding the button, why did she peek her head out and stare at them? If anything, she wouldn't want to get caught by this person. Why did the doors suddenly close if someone was holding the lift? Why did they suddenly stop? How did Eliza get through the two alarm doors to get in to the water tank? How did she get in to the water tank alone? How did she jump in, lift it up and get inside? By herself, without setting off the alarms. There are so many questions and not enough answers with this case. However, I do have my theories, as do many others. But we'll get to that in a second. What do we know about the case? In most cases, sitting down and looking at the facts and what you know helps to make things clearer. But in this particular case, it brings up more questions than answers. Now, an autopsy revealed that she had no traces of drugs or alcohol or anything like that in her system when she was found. So, I like to deal with worst case scenario. Here are my theories. If Eliza Lamb was a psychotic break, had a psychotic break and she, you know, went crazy in the elevator, Explain to me how she got past two locked and alarmed doors. How did she get into the water tank? Let's say she managed to climb out of that water tank. Let's say she was had superhuman strength. Or let's say she was on drugs that gave her that superhuman strength. How did she get past those two alarmed doors? My personal theory is that there was an accomplice. For example, someone such as a janitor. Someone with access to things such as the water tank. The, the uh, rooftop doors the special elevator key who could control the elevator, lock the doors and, ma and advanced functions for the elevator. Someone like that may have had a problem. Not to mention, maybe even though Eliza checked in alone, maybe she met someone at the hotel. The hotel was in a dodgy area and it wasn't exactly home to the most you know, savoury of characters. Maybe she ran into someone in the hotel. Maybe she got into an argument or a fight with someone at the hotel who decided they were going to teach her a lesson. A lesson she wouldn't forget. It's a very, very strange case. You can theorise all you want, but at the end of the day, we do not have the facts to solve this case. Any information anyone has, I'd appreciate. Any theories you have, leave them in the comments below. Send me a personal message. Also, I advise you check out a video online. A YouTube user has found a video of the footage that I showed you and has proved it's been edited. The footage I showed you comes off slowed down because it's the footage that was released. This user has edited the footage and sped it up so it looks at normal speed. You can also make out the timestamp a little bit more and they've pointed out when it changes. Um, the fact that the footage seems to be edited is ringing alarm bells. So just think about it. They supplied the footage, the people at the hotel, and the footage appears to be edited. The same hotel which someone got past two locked doors with an alarm and into a water tank. I think that someone else at the hotel took advantage. Maybe someone spiked her. Maybe she was having a drink in the hotel bar and some guy spiked her drink. 
took advantage of her state, led her up to the rooftop, dumped her in that water tank. We'll never know, but the mysterious part is the elevator. No matter what state she was in, she's not a psychic, she can't control the elevator. So why did the elevator doors not close? Maybe the elevator was malfunctioning. But it's funny how it decided to go back to normal and work again after she left. It's a very, very strange case. I welcome all your theories in the comments below. But anyhow, guys, thank you for watching the first episode of Mysteries with Lex. And don't forget any information you have to pass it on to me, any theories as well. I'd appreciate it. I'll also provide updates to this case if I find any. So if I find some more evidence or new evidence is unearthed, or anything like that, or if I have an even better theory that makes a lot of sense, I will definitely provide an update video marking this and marking the new evidence so the videos don't get outdated. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you sleep soundly tonight after today's video and don't end up waking up in a water tank. It's best to use a bathtub. It's much healthier. And think about the other guests. Sleep soundly tonight.